meeting of the uh, St. Charles County Council, uh, the meeting of uh, Monday, April 24th, 2023, to order. We will begin this meeting with an invocation uh, by Gwenda Plummer of Assembly of God Church, uh, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Nancy Snyder. Please stand. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to gather here tonight. And as our little granddaughter is prayed from the time she was old enough to pray, thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sins. And I, as I think of the needs of our world, I remember the violent domestic assault that I witnessed yesterday in the parking lot of a youth basketball tournament in St. Louis County. And I think of the violence that is present in our world, in our country, and at times in our community. But I remember the prayer that our four-year-old daughter prayed when she was tiny, and it was simply this. Dear God, if you could make this world and everything in it, you can take care of this problem. Amen. So tonight I pray for the leaders in our world, in our country, in our counties, and in our cities, that you would help them rule with wisdom, justice, and with guidance that comes from you. I thank you for our law enforcement, including those who responded quickly yesterday. And I pray that you would protect them. I pray for our military around the world who are protecting the very country that we live in. And in closing tonight, I pray the prayer that Jesus prayed. And if those in this room are comfortable, I ask you to pray with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please call the roll. Councilmember Matt Swanson. Here, ma'am. Councilmember Joe Brazel. Here. Councilmember Mike Elam. Here. Councilmember Terry Hollander. Here. Councilmember Dave Hammond. Councilmember Nancy Schneider. Here. Councilmember Tim Baker. Here. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would um, propose that we amend the agenda and move up our resolution for recognizing 636 Day to be next on the agenda. Okay. All those in favor say. I second. I need a second here. Second. second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? All right. Here we can. Do we want to read the agenda first? Yes. Or read the resolution? Right. Read first? the resolution, please. Resolution number 23 01. Sponsored by Council as a whole, a resolution recognizing June 3rd, 2023 as 636 Day in St. Charles County. Whereas 636 Day aims to build local civic pride and community throughout the 636 area code. And whereas the County Council wishes to promote and highlight the citizens, businesses, and places of St. Charles County. And whereas 636 Day will create awareness of small businesses in St. Charles County. And whereas 636 Day will create an opportunity for local businesses to participate by offering specials and promotions on June 3rd. And whereas the best of St. Charles County region will be celebrated on June 3rd. Now therefore be it resolved by the County Council of St. Charles County, Missouri as follows. Section 1, the St. Charles County Council hereby strongly supports the recognition of June 3rd, 2023 as 636 Day which will be a positive force for the community and will create awareness of the many fine small businesses in St. Charles County. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I yes. could ask Ed Akers to come up front. Mr. Akers. <coughs> Ed, thanks for coming. Uh, the middle one, please. So Hi. Uh, I'm sure most of you are familiar with 314 Day. 
Uh, it happened somewhere <laughs> east of here. I'm not quite sure where. Um, but a number of years ago, people started having civic pride based on their area code. Uh, I remember it became a really big thing when I used to work at Magic 108 and Atlanta had 404 was everywhere, right? So they were all talking about, I think that's the right area code for Atlanta. If I'm not, then I was really wrong and there's television cameras, which was really bad. Um, but the 314 thing came up in showing St. Louis pride. And Ed, I wanted you to kind of tell people a little bit where Local 636 came from and talk a little bit, if you can, about 636 Day that's coming up in Frenchtown. Thank you, Councilman Elaman. Happy birthday to you. Thank you very much. Uh, 636 Day, like any great idea I've had, is ripped off of somewhere else <laughs> and made into my own. A, a, a teacher told me once, uh, a trainer told me that there was no good original ideas, that everything was just kind of rewoven as kind of a marketing plan. So I say that joking. Uh, but you're right. Uh, there are other communities that have days that recognize, based on their area code or whatever prefix, uh, that celebrate a day for that county, St. Louis being the closest one. Springfield also has one uh, and a number of other different communities. Um, during COVID, like most other people, I got a little bored and started a podcast, which turned into this bigger idea to celebrate everything in St. Charles County. Um, of course, we don't have a June 36th on the calendar, so we have to be a little creative. That's what we do in, in marketing and sales, right? So uh, came up with the idea. Uh, actually, Beth Norville contacted me shortly after 314 Day and said, what do you think about 636 Day? And I said, I've already got notes, I've got a full plan, here it is. And so last year was the first 636 Day that we celebrated on June 3rd. We had a block party in Frenchtown um, on the, well, right about in the middle of the street between where Good News and LaBelle V are. Um, we had live music, we had street performers, uh, we had live art from local artists. We saw about 1,500 people, uh, of course, having no idea what to expect. This year, we are currently planning for 636 Day, which again happens on June 3rd. It's a Saturday this year. Uh, we have confirmed three music acts, including Steve Ewing of The Urge, uh, some other recognizable St. Charles bands. Uh, again, some street performers and some specials. We even have our local 636 beer, thanks to Good News Brewing. We will have the local 636 that. Hazy IPA on tap and in cans. Yes, sir. It still is the St. Louis area. There's got to be beer involved in any type of celebration, <laughs> despite the Bud Light thing. So uh, thanks to Dan for, for putting that together. Um, so wanted to kind of put this together. Appreciate the council for all getting together and supporting this idea, but really just putting pride in St. Charles County as a whole. Understanding that uh, not all of 636 is in St. Charles County, but the mayor of Chesterfield wants to be a part of St. or St. Charles County anyway. So I'm, I'm sure he would just jump on board with this and make it happen. Uh, so wanted to say thanks to you and to your crew uh, for putting this together. There's all kinds of 636 paraphernalia that they have available. I was telling Ed, I had a, a local 636 shirt on. We walked into a bar in Nashville and it turned out that the bartender is from O'Fallon. So as soon as he saw 636, he hopped right in. He said, hey, where can I get a shirt like that? So we just appreciate everybody coming on board. And we need some good news these days uh, to the prayer uh, that was just mentioned. We need some things to celebrate that are really good. There's a lot of great things that are going on in St. Charles County. And I appreciate folks coming up with an idea like this and giving us the opportunity to celebrate it. So. Thank you very much. Thanks. We just want to bring the right attention and uh, all kinds of positive attention to St. Charles because this is the best place on earth to live. I agree. I second. <laughs> <laughs> Will you please call the roll, Donna? Resolution number 2301, a resolution recognizing June 3rd, 2023, a 636 day in St. Charles County. Councilmember Swanson? Yes, ma'am. Councilmember Brazel? Yes. Councilmember Elam? Yes. Councilmember Hollander? Yes. Councilmember Hammond? Councilmember Schneider? Yes. Councilmember Baker? Yes. Thank you, sir. Thanks. All right, next on the agenda is a public presentation uh, from the St. Charles County Assessor Scott Shipman, and he will speak on an overview of the 2023 reassessment. Can I just say, Scott, I got a letter from you today, and I'm it open. Thank you, guys. Can you hear me? Is this one working, or which one? I want to also make sure uh, Travis Welge is the assessor elect. Um, he shares the same enthusiasm I do. Um, I gotta have glasses. It's the first time in 20 years. That's what this office has done to me. <laughs> but it's all good. But each year we try to um, inform the council of the reassessment cycle. 
2023 is a big year. Um, as you can realize, the real estate values over the last two to three years have really exploded, especially in St. Charles County. And what we wanted to share is just a high level flyover of the information that we're mailing to citizens. So the council has an idea of the correspondence they get from our office. Um, they're all going to be happy when they get it, Nancy. So when you open yours, you'll be joined. <laughs> so I can assure you of that. But there's a lot of uh, analytics that go into our values. We don't throw darts. Um, you know, we're in tune with the local real estate market. There's an in-depth review of the real estate information here. We get copies of building permits, uh, sales of every piece of property that transfers in St. Charles County. All that information is analyzed and compiled into the reassessment year. So I'm going to start real quick with what the notice looks like. If the guys in the back can um, turn over to perfect. So I'm going to go through this pretty quick. Um, this is a change in value notice. So essentially what this is going to display is last year's assessed value, this year's assessed value, and this year's market value. And there's some ancillary information on there about the property and also contact information and a QR code to scan and go right to your property characteristics on the website. So it's pretty neat. Next one's just obligatory information about the appeal process, frequently asked questions, a lot of information on there. The next one is the important one. If I turn it this way. This is property tax liability notice. This is one that nobody reads. This was a, a, a law that was passed several years ago that alerts the taxpayer to the change in probable tax for this year's cycle. So what we've noted on there is you can see the years uh, on the heading 2020, 2021, the projected 23s, and on that final column, the estimated tax difference, and at the bottom here, the estimated rate difference. This is important because most St. Charles County districts went up about 19%. Now, the law states that the political subdivisions should roll their levies back to offset that gain to the CPI of 5%, whichever is greater. They're going to get their 5% this year. But that difference in the rate should be 14% or so. You look down at that far column, and you can see how many political subdivisions change the rate. Some of the school districts are at 8 and 9 um, the uh, ambulance mm -hmm. district went up 33%. So these are all telling on what's happening with your tax. The value changed. Yes, it did. But the second side of this is the political subdivision should be rolling levies back. You guys are familiar with that. You did that last year with the personal property, which was the right thing to do. But that bottom number down here is a percent change in rate. And you see that combined percent change is only about 4%. This property is going to experience an estimated $700 increase in taxes. It's a lot of money. So it's an important piece of paper. Quickly, the, on the back of this, uh, when they receive the property tax liability notices, who determines your tax bill? Um, you know, the assessment authority, we determine the values. Tax authority determines the budget or their tax rate and the collection authority simply collects the bill. So those are the three authorities. If the citizens have a problem with their value, call us. Put all kind of information out there for them to check their value. Uh, properties that went up over 15% are going to receive this additional uh, informational flyer that's going to have why their property changed. You know, the, uh, the statute in the Missouri uh, statutes are, that references why we're sending the 15% increase. They can also request an interior inspection. Uh, last cycle, we had 25,000 or so that we sent out, and I think- We had nine people. Nine people wanting an interior inspection. People don't want the assessor in their home. I mean, <laughs> they just don't. <laughs> they should check their information, make sure it's right. On the back of this uh, notice of change is also gonna be copy of their sketch of their property so they're going to be able to look and see hey we make sure we've got everything right you know we're trying to give them everything possible to make sure their value is correct um, on our website uh, if the guys in the back can flip over to the laptop real quick we have a few links that are helpful to the citizens and hopefully to you guys as well as soon as we get this flipped over 
Um, you can search for any property in St. Charles County on a property uh, database search. And once you find that property, we'll give them a second to yep. get it flipped over. Is there a name I can use, Mary? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you put in your address, um, it'll return the site information. Um, and with that, there's links to view this sketch that'll pop up on the internet. A map zoomed in to your parcel area. You can zoom in and out, check sales. Um, there's also, I don't want to get ahead because yeah. it's pretty dynamic when you see it. Here okay. we go. Search. So we just use the street out in St. Charles Hills. This is kind of what it returns. Pick a property. And you can scroll down. Scroll down, it'll give you all the information on the house. Rooms, bedrooms, bathrooms, basement finish, garage area, deck space, everything about the home that we have on the property. The latest transactions, the assessed value, uh, prior year's values. If you hit this comparable sales and download CSV, it'll pop up a range of sales based on the architectural type, the area, and three years sales volume. So there's a ton of sales there. You can kind of evaluate where your value sits depending on the type of house you have. That's all the information that we have as well. I mean, so there's a lot of information for the, uh, for the citizen to use. Uh, you want to pop that map up real quick? Yep. If you can. Yep. Has anybody gotten calls yet? I know, Matt, you said you have. All pleasant ones, aren't they? Not too bad. Just get them to us. I mean, yep. we'll be holding informal hearings out at the election authority from uh, this week, probably till the end of June. Um, it's a good um, mutual place to have it. It's easy parking, easy in and out, instead of them coming down to the admin building, getting on elevators and all that stuff, centrally located. But, um, you know, we're planning for four or 5,000 appeals. We don't know how many we'll have, but we like to kind of overpromise and underperform that way. But um, this is a map. Those little monopoly houses are sold houses, so you can click on those, to find <coughs> out what they transferred for. Um, what about the dashboard? I know this is a lot of information quick, but we also designed this dashboard, and you can look at sales in your school district, you can look at sales in your city, you can look at sales in your neighborhood, and the trend lines, square foot, ranches, two stories, split foyers, commercial buildings, apartments. There's a ton of information on this website. So we hope this helps. And uh, again, if you get phone calls and just get them to us. We'll help untangle anything we can. Yes. Any Thank questions? You. Any questions? About this or something else? <laughs> <laughs> I asked you, we talked, you and I talked about this a year or two ago. I talked to Steve. I'm trying to figure out, um, we get calls from senior citizens, um, 62, 64, 68, are still paying uh, real estate taxes on their houses for 30 years. What would be the way, if, if it's possible, to give someone where they're getting of that age, where they're in retirement, where you're pricing out their house on taxes, that you would just, they're done. They don't have to keep paying taxes. Is, it, is that a state law, or is that going to be a charter it's, amendment? It'll be state law. And there's, t Joe, there's tons of variations throughout the United States. There's exemptions on a portion of your home. You know, there's, uh, there's limits. There's all kind of things. So there, other do. states are doing that? Absolutely yeah. they are. Yeah, it's, they that's absolutely terrible, are. man. It's terrible. But, you know, yeah. it's, about the, it's about the entities. I mean, it's not us. Yeah. You know, we're not, we're not receivers of the revenue. We're distributors of the tax burden based on the value. I understand. So yeah. it starts with that tax rate. I understand. And yeah. it starts with the schools, the cities, the fires, and the various political mm -hmm. subdivisions. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that are going to probably uh, repel it. I mean, they won't want to lose any money. Right, I understand. So that's where it's got to start. Right. Well, thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next uh, on our agenda is the conditional use permits uh, bills for uh, final passage, starting with bill number 5163. Bill number 5163, an ordinance granting conditional use permit CUP 22-15A for a lawn care service to Hearst Investment LLC and James Hearst BLCS LLC applicant. Any questions? Uh, just a reminder, you guys, you probably remember this, but this was a MoDOT um, 
storage unit and this particular business is a long care service where he is to keep all of his equipment on the inside and so um, this is my district too I, I don't have a problem with this this portion of it any other questions or comments I would just say uh, one of the ladies was uh, talking about the second CUP and I asked her do you have a problem with the lawn service of it and she said no so I agree with mr. Brazel and I said that publicly by the way um, so <laughs> can I get record that I know. send it to me <laughs> I I agree with mr. Brazel that uh, the lawn service portion of this I didn't hear the folks saying anything negative about that so I'm in favor of this as well okay please call the roll <clears throat> Bill number 5163, an ordinance granting conditional use permit CUP 22-15A for a lawn care service to Hearst Investments LLC and James Hearst BLCS LLC applicant. <coughs> Councilmember Brazel? Yes. Councilmember Elam? Yes. Councilmember Hollander? Yes. Councilmember Hammond? Councilmember Schneider? Yes. Councilmember Baker? Yes. Councilmember Swanson? Nay. Okay, Bill number 5163 passes. Uh, next up is Bill number 5164. Bill number 5164, an ordinance granting conditional use permit CUP 22-15B for an outdoor storage yard for boats to Hearst Investments LLC and James Hearst BLCS LLC applicant. Questions or comments, Mr. Brett? I just a couple comments on this one. I, I do not support this bill. Um, we had a lot of more neighbors coming out against this. It is, it butts up to other residential properties. If you remember, there's a tall fence, and um, it's right on the property line, so there's no, there will be no room for a berm or a hill like all the other storage <laughs> units have in our county. So I'm not in favor of this. It's not the right location, and we voted. There was one that's going to be across the street like a year or two ago, and we vote, we turned that one down as well. So I, I, I will not, I can't support this one either, or this one I can't support. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, please call the roll. Bill number 5164, an ordinance granting conditional use permit CUP 22-15B for an outdoor storage yard for boats to Hearst Investments LLC and James Hearst BLCS LLC applicant. Councilmember Elam? No. Councilmember Hollander? No. Councilmember Hammond? Councilmember Schneider? No. Councilmember Baker? No. Councilmember Swanson? No. Councilmember Brazel? No. Okay. Uh, bill number 5164 uh, fails. <laughs> Uh, the next uh, bill is 5165. Bill number 5165, an ordinance granting conditional use permit CUP 23-02 for a housing unit or units in the R1E district with a minimum lot width of 60 feet and minimum, minimum side yard setback of six feet to IPX Thompson 422-296 LLC property owner and MJA Properties LLC applicant. Questions or comments on this particular bill? Yeah, this is in my district, and I have heard no opposition to it, so I support it. <clears throat> okay, seeing no other comment, please call the roll. Bill number 5165, an ordinance granting conditional use permit CUP 23-02 for a housing unit or units in the R1E district with a minimum lot width of 60 feet and a minimum side yard setback of six feet to IPX Thompson 422-296 LLC property owner and MJA Properties LLC applicant. Councilmember Hollander? Yes. Councilmember Hammond? Councilmember Schneider? Yes. Councilmember Baker? Yes. Councilmember Swanson? Yes, ma'am. Councilmember Brazel? Yes. Councilmember Elam? Yes. Okay, bill number 5165 passes. Uh, that concludes the uh, CUPs that we have for tonight's meeting. Uh, next up, we have two public hearings. Uh, the first one on community housing needs and input on the 2023 annual action plan using federal community development block grant funds. So, do we have speakers on this particular hearing? Um, Arnie Dinoff. Mr. Dinoff. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the council. My name is Arnie C. A.C. Dinoff, County Public Advocate. And uh, what this is about is the citizen participation plan for the implementation of year three of the Community Development Block Grant Fund, known as the CDBG. It's a consolidated plan. However, the city of O'Fallon is not part of it for some reason. 
and the plan runs from 2021 through 2025. The program year for this year starts January 1st, 2023 through December 31st, 2023, and it's called the St. Charles CDBG Urban County Program. And so I had asked staff to negotiate with the city of O'Fallon since they are the last holdout of the, any municipality in St. Charles County. And then we have a true consolidated plan. So I don't know if anybody over here can nod their head if you've entertained or negotiated the city of O'Fallon joining the Urban County uh, Community Development Block Grant Fund. I see everybody looking at their computers, not looking up. So it would be nice if we would negotiate and save taxpayer money as the city of O'Fallon employs two full-time employees to administer a $260,000 program. So by combining those administrative fees into one truly consolidated urban county plan, we'll save a substantial amount of administrative costs, benefits, medical benefits, lifetime pension for those two workers. And it will in result in serving more residents who are needy and in need of uh, some of the services that are provided. Um, so again, I would beg, encourage, ask the administration who are all looking at their computers down, not really paying attention to what I had to say, and really negotiate with the city of O'Fallon and its wisdom in their leaders to save taxpayer money and have one administrator rather than several full-time administrators <coughs> in both the county and the city of O'Fallon. Um, so basically the urban county home improvement plan uh, program this will fund the urban county affordable rental program the urban county transportation program the st peter's transportation program the st peter's meals on wheels program the public services coordinated entry program uh, the urban county public services program the st peter's home improvement program the st peter's community services program the St. Charles Code Enforcement Program. And after looking at the federal code, I'm not really sure that you can use federal tax dollars in a grant to pay for local code enforcement of inspectors, their salaries, benefits, and pension. So I really have some problems with that St. Charles Code Enforcement issue. Uh, St. Charles Consortium of Care, which I'm not exactly sure what that is. Uh, Urban County Homeless Prevention Program. Uh, and that's what they've proposed to fund for this year's uh, funding of the Community Development Block Grant funds. Now, if any residents behind me or who are watching on the county's website uh, want to submit public comments uh, as part of this public hearing, they must be postmarked by April 25th, which is tomorrow, 2023, or you can email uh, Kathleen, that's K-A-T-H-L-E-E-N, period, Thompson, T H O M P S O N at S T C H A R L E S C I T Y M O dot gov. And so those are my comments for there. Um, my basic message is to the administration, to the council, it's probably too late this year, but let's help more needy people in our county and let's consolidate our community development black program by getting the last holdout, the city of O'Fallon, and let's save those administrative fees and really have an urban consolidated plan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And then I want to testify in the next one, so okay. do you want me to? Is there anyone else here to testify on the uh, first uh, uh, hearing? No, okay. And now we will uh, turn our attention towards the second one, which is uh, on the county substantial uh, amendment uh, regarding the community development block grant. Okay, and Mr. Dinoff, stay right there. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Arnie C. A.C. Dinoff, County Public Advocate. Um, we're talking about an amendment to the current uh, action plan uh, for this year, and that amendment is worth $1,706,489. Uh, it will go to cover public services 60% of the funding, uh, which was $1.126 of small business assistance, 9% of the funding, which will be $150,000. And of course, administration, 20% of the funding, which is $105,315. Um, and it is going to uh, fund $185,000 for 
the HVAC replacement of the City of St. Peter's Senior Center uh, that's located off of Mid Rivers Mall Drive. I believe it's a McMenity uh, Avenue. Uh, it's over there by uh, the uh, Mid Rivers Mall. Uh, the HVAC replacement of the City of St. Charles Senior Center uh, to the tune of $140,000. A public services coordinated entry program, $120,000, which provides financial support for the coordinated entry program to continue with the same capacity to serve county residents who are homeless or at risk of homelessness. And so if you have any residents who are having a hard time or struggling, I would encourage you to contact Kathleen Thompson, who is the uh, Community Development Block Grant Administrator. Um, and again, uh, public comments will be accepted by Kathleen Thompson at K A T H L E E N dot T H O M P S O N at S T C H A R L E S C I T Y M O dot G O V. Um, and this is a county substantial amendment for the Community Devel Development Block Grant Fund. Uh, I would encourage you to pass this amendment unanimously. And it'll go to help senior citizens, uh, people who were approaching homelessness, to keep them in their home, and some small business administration. And those are my comments, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Okay, that ends the uh, uh, two public hearings. Uh, next on the agenda is public comments. Just want to remind uh, the folks that will speak that you will be limited to three minutes. Please fill out a speaker's card, and we will limit... Uh, uh, to uh, three speakers for and three speakers against on any particular subject. First of all. Uh, Don Van regarding the prosecuting attorney. Okay. Good evening, members of the council. Mr. Elman, Joanne Lycom, Mr. O'Sullivan. My name is Don Van. I'm president of Fraternal Order of Police Lodge 15. On behalf of the Eastern Missouri Coalition of Police, Fraternal Order Police Lodge 15, we applaud and support the decision of the St. Charles County Executive Steve Elman to appoint Joseph McCullough as the St. Charles County's next prosecuting attorney. We support his appointment because Mr. McCullough has a thorough understanding of all aspects <clears throat> of the criminal justice system. As most of you know, Mr. McCullough served as a police officer for nearly two decades. As a police officer, Mr. McCullough's primary responsibility was to protect lives and property by en uh, enforcing laws, maintaining public order, and managing public safety. Following law school, Mr. McCullough served as prosecuting attorney where he's responsible for representing crime victims and for <coughs> prosecuting individuals who violated the law. Subsequently, Mr. McCullough entered private practice where, in part, represented individuals charged with a crime. In this capacity, Mr. McCullough ensure that his client's rights were protected and rendered high quality legal representation with integrity. Since 2015, Mr. McCullough has served as the St. Charles City's Municipal Judge where he presides over hearings, listens to opposing arguments, and applies the laws to each decision. Based on Mr. McCullough's vast experience and knowledge regarding the criminal justice system, FOP Lodge 15 fully supports his appointment as St. Charles County's next prosecuting attorney. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next. <coughs> Excuse me. Dan Dozer regarding bill number 5169. Just here to answer questions if needed later on the agenda. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Dozer. I mean, Jessica Howe. Hi. Hello, ma'am. Do I speak? Yep. You sure can. <laughs> I'm Jessica Howell. I'm the next door neighbor to the DDRB house that's on Canouse Road. And it's a great house. I'm sorry that they're going to be getting rid of it because my brother worked there 30 years ago. So we had many barbecues there when he was running the place. Um, they're wanting to put, well, that's just it. We don't know what they've changed the plan to be. Um, they said anywhere from three to 12 homes on that property. And right now we already have a water issue with the neighborhood that just came in next door to it. 
we were told no water would be on our property from that neighborhood. And my back third is destroyed. Um, we don't go back there. <laughs> Nobody goes back there. We had someone come out there to fight mosquitoes, and we told them if he got stuck back there, we would call the police and have him hauled out because there's so much water on the property. We are the low point between every subdivision around us. And with the latest subdivision, we went underwater back there. So we don't go back there. And as a matter of fact, when we had that major rainstorm the other day, my daughter and I went to the DDRB house and snuck around the back to see how um, their retention pond was doing on the subdivision. There was no water in it. It's like, shouldn't there be water in it with that much of a rainstorm? It was bone dry. Now my water was flowing great on my property and it's killed most of the back end of it. So to put in another street, 12 houses all above me and the water has no place to flow. There is no draining from my property to any other property. Everything that's around there goes down. We bought the house 20 years ago and it had a little trickle creek. Water barely got on our property. Then you guys put in the curbs and then we got more water on our property. And with the new subdivision, we just seem to have a lot. So if we put in yet another set of houses, we don't know, we'd like to sell that part of the property back to the county and you guys do something with it. I'm serious about that one. Um, you can make it a retention pond if you want. Um, Cause we don't know what to do with it. And we just look at it and say, well, it used to be part of us. So my only concern is how many more houses? What about the street? Water's gonna be rolling off that. It's gonna be rolling off homes. It can only go one way and that's down to my property. So I know one person does not matter to the county, but I'm hoping that that's not true. That's all I had to say. Thank you. Next. Peg Capo. Good evening. I'm just here if you have any questions about the proposal on Canal Strip. Thank you, ma'am. Be Lindsay Weedner. Hey, thank you so much for letting us speak tonight. Um, I'm a little caught off guard. I was cut, we missed the last uh, meeting uh, because my husband almost cut off his finger, so we uh, missed it. And um, and so I'm not sure what the new plan. I know that the, there was supposed to be a plan proposed for this particular property, um, so I don't know what the new plan is. Um, but I'll read for you what I had prepared for the last. Um, meeting that unfortunately we had missed. So um, thank you all very much for allowing us to speak here at this meeting. Um, I know that I also emailed many of you with a PDF outlining our concerns with adding um, rezoning and possibly with, of course, the addition of houses. Um, I appreciate the time that you took to read our concerns. Um, I thank you also for Mike for calling and speaking with my mom and me um, about what was going on in our regards to this property proposal. Um, we do understand that this is not um, proposing actual buildings being put up yet. What we do understand is, is the elephant in the room, that the elephant that a yes vote will open the door to future developments on this property, not if, but when. Uh, Mike, um, I think you eloquently laid out the true purpose of this proposed zoning. The proposal is to try to be able to split up this property so it is more profitable to sell, the keyword profit. Profit for this organization with regard to this property. My, my big concern and question is, um, at what point do people matter more than profit? Um, I understand that we are just one family and it doesn't seem to really make a big impact, but when you see everything I laid out in the PDF that I sent you um, a couple weeks ago, it's not just something that will hurt my family, it will hurt our neighbors, the residents of Addison Park, and um, the, uh, the even future residents of the property in very negative ways. Um, every day, um, I am tasked with teaching future generations um, of children to think critically about the world in which they live. I implore this committee to also do likewise. 
Um, we ask for you to say no and require the current occupants of this proposed this property to come forward with a critically thought out plan for this property that will both be profitable for them and not negatively impact those around them. Um, I implore you to put people above profit. Do not allow the owners to just throw something against the wall and see what sticks. Make them think critically and come up with a better plan. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. Um, Arnie Dinoff. Mr. Dinoff. Thank you very uh, much, Mr. Chairman, members of the council. My name is Arnie C. A.C. Dinoff, uh, County Public Advocate. On the appointment of St. Charles Municipal City Judge and County Prosecuting Attorney nominee Joe McCalla, is Mr. McCalla truly a Republican with conservative values that will be conservative with our conservative families in St. Charles County, or is he a Democrat in disguise? The appointment shall be until December 31st, 2024. In accordance with our county home rule charter, a special election for the unexpired two years remaining in the term will be held with uh, filing to begin in February 2024, a primary for the choice of the people in August 2024, and a general election to be held in November 2024 with the new person who the people select taking office in January of 2025. I ask that Mr. McCullough listen to victims and their families very sincerely, that Mr. McCullough is tough on crime and that he really means it because we need to be really tough on crime, especially now. That Mr. McCullough puts a stop to corruption in political subdivisions across St. Charles County. That Mr. McCullough, that you refuse to play political games or take direction from Mr. Elman and harass political opponents. Mr. McCalla, I ask that you don't cut favors for, pub, uh, for police officers or sheriff's deputies who violate state statutes or violate the federal code under the color of law inappropriately using their law enforcement badge or that you cut them deals when they commit civil right violations against our citizens. The subdivisions that need to be corrected are the St. Charles County uh, Community College District in which Mr. Elman's wife serves the Democrats of that Board of Trustees. They violate Chapter 610 of the Open Meetings Act. They do not allow public testimony in violation of our state constitution. They don't allow First Amendment rights. They don't allow signage of people who are in opposition or opinion and threaten people who come to the community college district with arrest. They don't allow introduction of guests that they did for months before. I ask that you stop the illegal spending of the college district immediately. Public water district number two of St. Charles County where water commissioners were ripping off the residents of the county in the tune of paying themselves $25,000 plus benefits and expenses. And I ask you cut down the public corruption in the shell company of the, of the East Central Water and Sewer Authority. Thank you, sir. I ask that the county council take into consideration that Mr. McCall sir. is a true sir. Republican, serving our residents fully sir. as Republican. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, any other public comments? Susan Gorse on uh, Bill 5163 and 5164. Thank you. Um, you approved Bill 5163 for a lawn business on Hopewell Road. Uh, according to what I've found in some of the county ordinances, um, the applicant is planning to build a building that is too that exceeds the limit to ordinance number 405.080, which says, the, and which is a point E, accessory structure. The maximum total size of an accessory structure or of more than one accessory structures on any given parcel may not exceed the following limits. Letter C, 
for parcels at least three, but less than five acres in size. This is a three acre piece of property. The maximum size is 3,600 square feet. And the applicant has plans to build a 5,499 square foot building. So I don't know if that would be a matter for the Board of Code Enforcement, but I'm just, uh, appears to me that, that he's not allowed to build a building of that size. And the other issue, um, which could also be a matter for the Board of Code Enforcement, would be exterior lighting. I don't know if there is planning to be 24-hour lighting on this lawn business, but um, Section 405.421 says that there are exterior lighting standards, and the purpose is, of that is to regulate the spillover of light and glare in, in the area and on land uses and to um, prevent the creation of nuisances. So I hope there won't be 24-hour lighting because there are three homes right next to this, which if they opened their door, they would not have a night sky. It would, they would have this light to look at. So once again, I don't know um, if this is something you can amend or Board of Code Enforcement, but those are two things that would be um, of concern to all of the neighbors on Hopewell Road, as I am one. Thanks for your attention. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, uh, Laura Buddenmeyer on uh, criminal justice. Hi, my name is Laura Buttemeyer, and I live at 837 First Capital and also in Sherman, Texas. Part of the year I spend one place and part of the year I spend the other place. Um, and here's my situation. My grandson was beaten with by a man with a loaded gun on the football field of Fort Zumalt High School on videotape. Uh, his co-defendant was Tanya Carilla. The man's name was Eric Rochester Jones. <laughs> The case has been drug out for months and months, years. It was in October of 2019, and the case has been drug out. Every time we get ready to go to trial, the Judge McDonough continues it for another six months, and this time he continued it again until October of 2023 for case review. He didn't even set it for trial, and that's for Tanya Carrillo. Mr. Rochester Jones, is he had absconded. He was posted a $500 bond, even though he was on parole for fentanyl dealing, and he was also on probation. He was allowed to leave the jail, and he never returned. And this man is a proverbial one-legged man, literally. The police have done everything they can to try to catch him, but the court is uncooperative. I had him cornered, I'm a bond agent in Texas. I had him cornered in at his brother's house in Humble, Texas. He had been on the porch. I had videotape and pictures of him. The judge, McDonough, would not sign the appropriate paperwork to get him picked up. I had uh, Detective Martinez was ready to pick him up. So then by the time they moved everything around, then he went to another jurisdiction. Then, then I had him cornered up in Troy. I couldn't get anybody from St. Charles County to go up there. Troy, of course, you know, is Lincoln County's a nightmare. You can't get anything out of them. So then he escaped again. So this is a little scam that they're running. Mrs. Carrillo, she tells everybody that she's drug cartel, and she they she gets her son to trade the kids some kind of item like tennis shoes or T-shirts, and then says the item wasn't worth the, what it was valued at, and then she wants the kids to deal drugs. My grandson refused. He was brutally beaten. His nose and skull were fractured. He's had one surgery. He has to have two more surgeries in the future, and still this man is at large. I find it un incomprehensible that tex the Texas Rangers are more concerned than the courts of St. Charles County about this violent fentanyl dealer being loose in our community. And he moves between Texas and St. Louis, and he sells drugs, and he there's nothing that can be done. The police are doing their jobs. The O'Fallon police, the uh, U.S. Marshals, I've been in contact with them, but we cannot get the court to cooperate. Judge McDonough, he whispers things in his court. He doesn't allow us to say anything. And then it's always continued with these sneaky attorneys. Um, 
Tim Lamar uh, did not return our calls. Larry, who's assigned on the case, he just keeps saying that he's got to go somewhere else and he's not there. In the meantime, my grandson is threatened. He's abused. He gets stalking phone calls. The woman has come to his house and I can't get any resolution. So I'm asking you as the county council to do something about this person and Thank to get the paperwork processed and to do something about our criminal justice system. Thank you hear about Kim Garner? Thank you, ma'am. You hear about Kim Garner? We Thank have the same situation in St. Charles County going on. And Thank this man is going to hurt somebody and kill somebody because they keep continuing. And her as well. Thank you. One, one more card was it turned in after the time. We'll go oh, ahead and go. We'll go ahead. Let's go. It's uh, Dan Warshaw from on build number 5164. Good evening. Um, my name is Dan Marischal. I'm an, an actual professional engineering firm named Caro Services. And I had been solicited by Mr. Hurst to uh, develop his conditional use permit for his yard. And uh, he had bought the property, you know, initially, I think when we had done the initial reading, um, we might not have had everything actually shown, you know, or all the facts given. But um, where we're at today is, you know, we're operating within the confines of the code and the ordinances that are adopted for the use of that property. The property that exists was originally a St. Charles County storage yard. It has a salt dome on it. It's a three acre lot that's perimeter fenced uh, as it sits today, as it has sat for about 30 years and has a razor wire, barbed wire fence, you know, at the top of it. Um, it's in a small industrial pocket. I don't know Earlier, Mr. Shipman had uh, the computer pulled up with the actual assessor's office. I don't know if we can actually pull that up and look at it. But um, basically, I mean, right now, the way that the property had been approved through planning and zoning in terms of its highest and best use as it's zoned today and as it sits today is, uh, you know, acceptable for landscape use, but also boat storage. Those are, that's part of the St. Charles County ordinances that are adopted. Um, he's not asking for an, excep an exception or a variance request. He's been more than compliant with adjoining landowners and property owners. And uh, it's something that I think we need to just consider that planning and zoning did approve the first and second reading of it. So, so we, you know, we've already vote, voted on both of those CUPs and one of them passed, one of them failed. Um, so at this point, that's, that's how that stands. And I, I there, you know, we, we've, we've moved on is what we've done, so. Um, that's where we're at. So for next steps, what are the next steps? You'll need to talk, yeah, to, planning need to, talk to planning and zoning and, and check with, with, with what they see as the next step. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. That's all. Okay. All right. Uh, next uh, is the oral report from the county executive. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next up is the consent agenda. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion, question. question. Yes. Okay. I see we have a uh, creek bank stabilization project uh, that's on here. And okay. Just pull it off. <coughs> huh? Pull it off. Yeah, let's pull, let's okay. pull that off. And just okay, we, have a, we have a motion to remove the. Um, and. Uh, how many are in favor of removing that particular item from the consent agenda? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Are there anything else to be removed from the consent agenda? Okay. Seeing none, I need a motion to approve the remainder of the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Consent agenda passes. Um, if we can... Um, quickly um, yeah. handle Mr. Baker's so, thing and then we'll come back. Just it. further emphasize that we have a creek bank stabilization issue in the county and, and I think the county's in a position through this parks that they can afford to address a, a creek bank stabilization project. But again, since I've been elected, I've just seen a vast number of erosion and creek bank problems throughout the county that something I think needs to be done. and. I think it's great that the county is in a position to pay for, for something like this, but residents aren't. So uh, and I just asked the council as a whole, let's, let's, let's figure out a solution. I mean, we don't have to fix everything, but we just need to 
understand where storm sewer is, how important it is to the county. We are the fastest growing county in St. Charles or in Missouri. We need to do something. So that's all I have to say. I support the bill. I mean, Creek Bank stabilization is a problem. We're just fortunate enough that we're able to, to address it where homeowners associations and some others are not. So that's my comments. Okay. I need a motion. Motion to, to put it back on agent. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do I second. have a second? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Now, I'd like to take this time to uh, congratulate Mr. McCulloch uh, to his uh, appointment as our new prosecuting attorney, welcome you to St. Charles County, and allow you to uh, offer some comments if you'd like to do that. Um, yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. First, I'd like to... Uh, Thank Mr. Elman for selecting me and nominating me to the uh, board here uh, for this position. It's a position that I've uh, longed for for a long time, and uh, the timing just wasn't right. And this happened to be a time that uh, uh, I'm very happy and very excited to uh, get the opportunity to serve the people of St. Charles again. Um, I think I bring some unique qualifications to this position that was pointed out earlier with the 20 years as a police officer and also 20 plus years as a criminal defense attorney. So I understand both sides of the issue. And I understand that sometimes people, uh, good people, do dumb things or bad things and they need to get a second chance. And I also understand that there are mean people that do mean things and those are the ones that, uh, you know, we're going to do our best to put in jail and, and keep this county the safe and, and great community that it is. So other than that, any questions, I'll gladly answer them. But I just want to thank you for uh, approving me as the next prosecutor. Yes. Mr. Elman. Chairman, I'd just like to take the opportunity Probably the prosecuting attorney job is more important than the county executive job. And I would dare go even further and say that his job is even more important than being on the county council. I would think so. And <laughs> I uh, have complete confidence in his ability to do the job. And I know you'll be back here at, at budget time, if not before. But yes. if there's ever uh, anything that we can do uh, in our office, our county council office, please hope Stay in touch with us. Uh, let us know, and uh, obviously you're always welcome at our meetings. So uh, congratulations, and uh, got a big job ahead of you. And uh, wish you all. Thank you, Mr. Elman. Thank you. Thank you. So yes, I just want to say, um, uh, the older you get, the smarter you get. And um, Mr. McCullough, some people called and said that he was a Democrat, and um, I just point out to you, as he pointed out to me, I've been I've been called a Democrat, and you all know where I stand. So. <laughs> Um, we all get smarter as we get older, and uh, I serve with Mr. McCullough on the, this board here, and he's a very good gentleman, very good man, and he is conservative because he did get smarter. <laughs> I'm teasing him. Thank you, Mr. Brazel. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Sir. We certainly appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, next up is the bills for final passage, beginning with bill number 5166. Bill number 5166, an ordinance amending ordinance number 05-198, granting conditional use permit number 655 for a nursery to Luter Prairie Farms, LLC property owner. Any questions or comments on bill number 5166? Seeing none, please call the roll. An ordinance amending ordinance number 05-198, granting conditional use permit number 655 for a nursery to Luter Prairie Farms, LLC property owner. Councilmember Schneider? Yes. Councilmember Baker? Yeah, uh, yes. Councilmember Swanson? Yes, ma'am. Councilmember Brazel? Yes. Councilmember Elam? Yes. Councilmember Hollander? Yes. Councilmember Hammond? Okay. Uh, bill number 5166 passes. We move on to bill number 5167. Bill number 5167, an ordinance amending the zoning district map of the County of St. Charles, Missouri by rezoning land from A, Agricultural District, to C1, Neighborhood Commercial District, per application RZ23-01. Okay. Uh, Terry? You, yes. So, uh, okay, it's yes. just, just some housekeeping sure. in here. We're going to, I want to uh, 
Make a motion to put the substitute bill in place, 5167. Okay. Okay, I need a second for second. that. Okay, uh, so we're now going to vote on replacing the bill with substitute bill. Is right now, correct? you're just going to vote on, to approve the amendment right now. Right. Okay. okay. And so all in favor. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, next now. Okay, and then the petitioner requested that this be tabled to next meeting. It's a motion. Okay. I need second. A second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Bill number, uh, substitute bill number 5167 uh, has been tabled. Okay. Next up is bill number 5168. Bill number 5168, an ordinance amending the zoning district map of the County of St. Charles, Missouri by rezoning land from A, Agricultural District, to R1A, Single Family Residential District, per application RZ23-02. Questions or comments on Bill 5168? Seeing none, please call the roll. An ordinance amending the zoning district map of the County of St. Charles, Missouri by rezoning land from A, Agricultural District, to R1E, Single Family Residential District, per application RZ23-02. Councilmember Baker? Yes. Councilmember Swanson? Yes, ma'am. Councilmember Brazel? Yes. Councilmember Elam? Yes. Councilmember Hollander? Yes. Councilmember Hammond? Councilmember Schneider? Yes. Okay, bill number 5168 passes. Uh, next bill for final passage is bill number 5169. Bill number 5169, an ordinance amending the zoning district map of the County of St. Charles, Missouri by rezoning land from R1A, single family residential district, to R1D, single family residential district, per application RZ23-03. Okay, questions or comments? I'd Mr. like to invite the applicant to come up real quick. So I had a chance to talk with these ladies um, and they, as you might imagine, have some serious concerns because of what happened before. Obviously, that wasn't you, it was someone else, but they still ended up in a horrible situation. And um, I'm not quite sure how we're gonna be able to help them and fix that, but obviously, we don't wanna add to it and make it worse. And I know there were some folks here uh, at the last meeting who were really concerned about what's going to happen. So I, I wanna be clear that what you're asking for is not to build anything at the moment. Is that fair? It's fair. So what you're truly asking for is rezoning the property, but you're not asking to put anything on it at the moment. Is that true? True. So what changes would these folks look at if we approve this? How would this affect their lives at the moment? It wouldn't. So uh, nothing's being approved in terms of building. No streets are going in. Um, you're not going to do anything. Um, the lady talked about the house that was right. there. Mm -hmm. um, so you will be tearing down that house. Is that what I'm understanding? Or are you not going to tear down that house? We don't know yet. Okay. But the there's board, no one living the in the house right now. Decision. Right. There's no one living in the house That's right correct. now. Right. And the house is not livable at the moment. Correct. Okay. correct. There would have to be some modifications to get it up to livability yeah. okay that's all the questions yes, I have Mr. Go ahead. I just the, the the only concern that I have mm -hmm. is um, it, it's like um, and, and you, I could be getting this wrong but it's like we're giving you kind of a blank check without a plan and so I think that that's what the concerns are to the residents if you were to think possibly that um, I, I, I would support it if there was a plan that mm -hmm. was identified of what you were exactly going to do and not mm -hmm. just give us blanket zoning, mm -hmm. because that's the concern mm -hmm. if you had to come up with a plan. But there is no plan. And so right. it's it's concerning to the to the residents. And so sure. that's the problem I have. Yeah. I mean, so I'm just telling you, I, I don't if what you say is what you're going to do, which right. is very well could be, I'm assuming. But you, Dr. Dozer, you just said you're not sure exactly if you're turning mm -hmm. the house down or if you're not or what. And that's so correct. it seems to me if you had a better formatted plan, then I could support it. But at this point, I'm going to have a hard time supporting it unless you want to come back and, and have a plan instead of kill the, mm -hmm. I'm just saying, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm just saying. Well, the DDRB is not a developer, so we're not planning on developing that property. But, so there, the, but there's no, I know, but there's no plan. That's all I'm saying. There's just no plan. And so as we're, we're asked, being asked to vote on something, and but there's no plan. And so that's the mm -hmm. only, I do have a problem mm -hmm. with that. I'm just being honest mm -hmm. with you. Sure. 
yeah. Councilman Snyder. So apparently okay. then, since you don't have any plans to develop it, am I correct in assuming that your plan is to sell it to a developer? I think the board has several options, but one of them has to do with rezoning that property so that the lots could be smaller. If they would choose as one option to create another home, as opposed to remodeling the, the existing home to, to create another home on a smaller uh, footprint of that property, the way it's zoned, we'd have to do it on an acre lot as opposed to a smaller lot um, that would be more beneficial for our clients. Well, uh, but that's only one option that the board would consider after it being rezoned. But the board ha has not allowed anyone to be living in the house for how long a period of time, the one that's there now? It's been vacant for four to five years, um, largely because of um, lack of employees by uh, service organizations to support individuals. We have plenty of need for uh, residents to uh, be housed. We just, in this work environment, we don't have enough mm -hmm. staff uh, within the agencies that support our organization to allow individuals to live there. So what would be the, what would be the interest in doing so right now if you don't have any further plans and there hasn't been any plan made as to what would do with it? Why do that now? We want to rezone it now so that the board has more options as to what can be done in the future with that property, whether to be redevelop it for a single house uh, on a smaller footprint or to market that particular property. Um, it's a board of nine that has to make that decision. Okay. Anyone else? Mr. Swanson. And this probably gets a little bit into your guys' board. Do you ever talk about going to R1B, R1C before going to R1D? Or did you just jump right to R1D? We, we went to R1D in compliance with your master plan and the neighboring uh, subdivisions in the area are all R1D. So that's after consulting with the office, your office, uh, that was the recommendation to go to R1D. And that's what I'm trying to get at. So the neighboring area is all R1D. That's correct. If we would go to R1B, we'd be looking at uh, 20,000 square foot, R1C, 15,000 square foot. So this is matching the neighborhood around you. Right. Exactly. And that's why you're requesting R1D. That's right. correct. All right. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other questions? Could I have a question of Robert? Certainly can. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you folks. You. Sorry. Um, okay. So if if they were to get this zoning, right. before anybody could build on that, would they not have to come back to planning and zoning and get that plan approved? To subdivide, yes, as a plat. They'd have to have a plat presented to the Planning and Zoning Commission and approved by them, a preliminary so plat. They couldn't just start building houses on it on just because we changed the zoning? No. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, please call the roll. Bill number 5169, an ordinance amending the zoning district map of the County of St. Charles, Missouri by rezoning land from R1A, single family residential district, to R1D, single family residential district, per application RZ 23 03. Councilmember Swanson? Yes, ma'am. Councilmember Brazel? No. Councilmember Elam? Yes. Councilmember Hollander? Yes. Councilmember Hammond? Councilmember Schneider? Yes. Councilmember Baker? No. Okay. Bill number 5169 passes. Uh, next up for consideration is bill number 5170. Bill number 5170, an ordinance amending the zoning district map of the County of St. Charles, Missouri by rezoning land from A, Agricultural District with Floodway Fringe Overlay District to RF, Riverfront District with Floodway Fringe Overlay District per application 23-04. Question comments on Bill 5170. Yes, Mr. Is Swanson. Is the applicant here for that one? Uh, I don't believe so. Okay. Um, my, uh, you know, my experience with this type of uh, rezoning in that particular area of the county is that's being done. It's at least the fourth or fifth one that we've had that just allows uh, the folks that own the uh, yacht clubs and the 
boat docks to um, you know uh, be allowed to, to the, the the better kind of zoning, I guess, than what we've had in the past. Yeah, I was just curious about what the big overall plan was for down there, but within the packet doesn't say much unless staff can enlighten me on this at all. Yeah, Mr. Meyer. Sorry, again, for making you get oh, out. Well, your... Sorry, my back's going yeah. out today. Um, number of um, boat docks and uh, campgrounds along the riverfront, Mississippi Riverfront, are rezoning from agricultural to riverfront because those uses are allowed by right, and so they can go through the site plan process in order to expand in the future. Right now, every time they want to expand, they have to come before the Planning Zoning Commission and County Council. The riverfront zoning, the, the uh, purpose and intent refers specifically to recreation on the Missouri and Mississippi rivers. And so there seems to be, a, I think, a natural fit for, for that. Um, one thing they'd like to do is expand their campground slightly. I think they're looking at having one of these elevated cottages along the river. And I think they're wanting to put in, at this time, one elevated cottage that will be uh, rented as a campground amenity. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Any other? Yes. Yeah. yes. Um, you know, I, I looked at the, uh, the meeting and it, no one was there to oppose it. There weren't any letters. I will tell you that I did receive a telephone call from um, a person who had some agricultural property contiguous to this and he was concerned about a number of things like flooding and trash and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. But it, judging from the people who have operated this in the past have there been any concerns or problems in terms of their use of the property or their conforming with the uh, rules and regulations that are governing what they have now uh, to my knowledge there haven't been any uh, violations of the zoning <laughs> ordinance not all of their property is proposed for riverfront zoning. That some of the property st would still remain under agricultural yeah, zoning. This was, this was one of those people. Okay. I guess he was concerned because in the past, I guess there was flooding and there were some of those clubhouses that were raised up and there was trash and so forth and so on in the area. So mm -hmm. I think it was kind of a general concern. But I haven't been advised of any serious um, breaches of uh, care for the property or following the uh, ordinances. So I just wanted to see if you or your staff had any concerns or complaints. Yeah, not to my recollection. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Please call the roll on bill number 5170. Bill number 5170, an ordinance amending the zoning district map of the County of St. Charles, Missouri by rezoning land from A, agricultural district with floodway fringe overlay district to RF, riverfront district, with floodway fringe overlay district per application RZ 23-04. Councilmember Brazel? Yes. Councilmember Elam? Yes. Councilmember Hollander? Yes. Councilmember Hammond? Councilmember Schneider? Yes. Councilmember Baker? Yes. Councilmember Swanson? Yes, ma'am. Bill number 5170 passes. Next bill for consideration is bill number 5171. Bill number 5171, an ordinance relating to housing and community assistance and one, approving the 2023 annual action plan for St. Charles County, Missouri in its capacity as an urban county for fiscal year 2021 through 2025 under the Community Development Block Grant Program of the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development and authorizing the county executive to execute all documents or certifications required for submittal to HUD with the action plan and two, further <coughs> authorizing the county executive to execute the funding approval slash agreements that HUD shall require upon approving the 2023 annual action plan. Questions or comments on this particular bill? Seeing none, please call the roll. Bill number 5171, an ordinance relating to housing and community assistance and one, approving the 2023 annual action plan for St. Charles County, Missouri in its capacity as an urban county for fiscal year 2021 through 2025 under the Community Development Block Grant Program of the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development and authorizing the county executive to execute all documents or certifications required for submittal to HUD with the action plan and two, further authorizing the county executive to execute the funding approval slash agreements that HUD shall require upon approving the 2023 annual action plan. Councilmember Elam? Yes. Councilmember Hollander? Yes. Councilmember Hammond? 
Councilmember Schneider? Yes. Councilmember Baker? Yes. Councilmember Swanson? Yes, ma'am. Councilmember Brazel? No. Bill number 5171 passes. Uh, next up is bill number 5172. Bill number 5172, an ordinance authorizing the county executive or his designee to execute an intergovernmental agreement for financial assistance, grant agreement number 2023008 between St. Charles County and the St. Louis Jefferson Solid Waste Management District for receipt of funds in an amount up to $160,000. Questions or comments? Seeing none, please call the roll. Bill number 5172, an ordinance authorizing the county executive or his designee to execute an intergovernmental agreement for financial assistance, grant agreement number 2023008 -008 between St. Charles County and the St. Louis Jefferson Solid Waste Management District for receipt of funds in an amount up to $160,000. Councilmember Hollander? Yes. Councilmember Hammond? Councilmember Schneider? Yes. Councilmember Baker? Yes. Councilmember Swanson? Yes, ma'am. Councilmember Brazel? Yes. Councilmember Elam? Yes. Okay, bill number 5172 passes. Uh, next bill is 5173. Bill number 5173, an ordinance authorized an execution of a trail license agreement and ingress egress between St. Charles County and the Missouri Department of Natural Resources to allow the St. Charles County Parks and Recreation Department to rock a section of trail that separates Missouri Bluffs Park from the Katy Trail State Park for the consideration of $10. Questions or comments? Seeing none, please call the roll. Bill number 5173, an ordinance authorized an execution of a trail license agreement and ingress egress between St. Charles County and the Missouri Department of Natural Resources to allow the St. Charles County Parks and Recreation Department to rock a section of trail that separates Missouri Bluffs Park from the Katy Trail State Park for the consideration of $10. Councilmember Schneider? Yes. Councilmember Baker? Yes. Councilmember Swanson? Yes, ma'am. Councilmember Brazel? Yes. Councilmember Elam? Yes. Councilmember Hollander? Yes. Councilmember Hammond? Okay. Uh, bill number 5173 passes, and last bill for final passage is bill number 5174. Bill number 5174, an ordinance amending the 2023 budget as adopted by ordinance 22-087 as amended for the removal of a wireless communication slash network spec one position and the addition of a wireless communication slash network spec three position in the Department of Emergency Communications of St. Charles County. Okay. Questions or comments, please. Seeing none, please call the roll. Bill number 5174, an ordinance amending the 2023 budget as adopted by ordinance 22-087 as amended for the removal of a wireless communication slash network spec one position and the addition of a wireless communication slash network spec three position in the Department of Emergency Communications of St. Charles County. Councilmember Baker? Yes. Councilmember Swanson? Yes, ma'am. Councilmember Brazel? Yes. Councilmember Elam? Yes. Councilmember Hollander? Yes. Councilmember Hammond? Councilmember Schneider? Yes. Bill number 5174 passes. We now have two bills for introduction, starting with bill number 5175. Bill number 5175, requested by Michael Herbert, sponsored by Terry Hollander. An ordinance one, authorizing the amendment of the St. Louis Home Consortium Consolidated Plan 2016 to, through 2020, and amending the 2019 Annual Action Plan for St. Charles County, Missouri, in its capacity as an urban county under the Community Development Block Grant Program of the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development, and two, authorizing the county executive to execute all related documents, certifications, and contracts. Okay, questions or comments on Bill 5175? Seeing none, we move on to Bill number 5176 for introduction. Bill number 5176, requested by John Lyons, sponsored by Mike Elam, an ordinance granting the Great Rivers Greenway District a license to install a portable restroom at the Trailhead parking lot off Research Park Drive. Questions or comments on 5176? Seeing none, that uh, brings us to table bills, which there are none. Uh, announcements and miscellaneous. Does anyone have anything? It's meant to. Okay. Oh, yes, Mr. Swanson. Happy birthday to our Councilman Elam. Yes. Thank Another you uh, trip around the uh, calendar, and you're still <laughs> doing well. <laughs> we're, we're proud of you. Appreciate that. Okay. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So move. Okay, second. second. Okay. Thank you, <laughs> folks. 57.